Now let's look at some specific illicit acts. Between 2004 and 2009, the apparel company Ralph Lorenz, Argentinian subsidiary, bribed customs officials to improperly obtain paperwork necessary for importing goods through customs. The permit clearance of these items without the necessary paperwork and the clearance of prohibited items on occasion to avoid inspection. Fake invoices were created to mask the payoffs, which totaled roughly $580,000 according to the case documents. Ralph Lorraine Corporation agreed to pay $1.6 million after finding that its subsidiary in Argentina repeatedly bribed customer or customs officials. The clothing label will pay $82,000 penalty as part of a non-prosecution agreement with the Justice Department and will give up roughly $735,000 in illicit profits and interest as part of a non-prosecution agreement with the Security and Exchange Commission. The Ralph Lauren Corp stated that the bribes were wholly consistent wholly inconsistent with the culture of compliance and integrity that we have worked diligently to establish. After conducting a full investigation of the matter, Ralph Lauren Corp reported its findings promptly to the federal authorities and bolstered its, co its compliance efforts. Quote, there was no evidence that the improper activity in Argentina was known or authorized by anyone outside of that country or that similar practices were occurring at other foreign operations. The statement said, the SEC and the Justice Department both praised, both praised the company's response to the misconduct. Many business issues seem straightforward and easy to resolve on the surface, but are, but are in reality quite complex. For example, it is considered on, improper to give or accept bribes which are payments, gifts, or special favors intended to influence the outcome of a decision. Ethics is also related to the culture in which the business operates. Experience with a culture in which business operations, in which a business operates, is critical to understanding what is ethical and what is unethical. One of the principal causes of unethical behavior in organizations is overly aggressive financial or business objectives. Many of the issues related to decisions and concerns that managers have that they have to deal with on a daily basis. A decision of a few issues can help you begin to recognize ethical problems with which business persons must commonly deal. So let's look at some specific types of misconduct. This graphic shows some examples of different kinds of, of workplace misconduct. One of the principal causes of unethically, unethical behavior, as mentioned before, is aggressive financial or business objectives, but the ethic, ethical issues involve all types of organizations, including nonprofits, government, schools, and universities. The National Business Ethics Survey found that workers witnessed many instances of ethical misconduct in their organizations. The table that I've that is shown here that I referenced before shows some of the more common issues. This is from the Ethics Resource Center in 2013. One of the most common ones, or one to, to think about that is that affects many of us or many of us have seen or even been tempted to uh, be non-compliant with is what was is called the theft of company time this is a common area of misconduct that is observed every day in the workplace many employees spend an average of an hour each day using social networking sites and watching YouTube, something like that, or taking a extra long lunch breaks or long coffee breaks or leaving the office early, many different possibilities. Time theft costs can be difficult to measure, but they're estimated to cost companies hundreds of billions of dollars annually. It's widely believed that the average employee steals about 4.5 steals in quotes, steals about 4.0 hours a week 
with late arrivals, leaving early, long lunch breaks, inappropriate sick days, excessive socializing, and engaging in personal activities such as online shopping and watching sports while on the job. All of these add up, add together and they, in, they, in, they create lost productivity and therefore diminish profits for the employer. That's why there's an ethical issue here. One is paid to perform certain duties and when one is not performing those duties, then there is an ethical challenge associated with that. These relate to ethical issues and is called time theft. Let's look at another one that might be common in the workplace. Abusive behavior or behavior that is might be called bullying, bullying is another common ethical problem for employees. These concepts could mean anything from physical threats, false accusations, profanity, insults, yelling, harshness, unreasonableness, to ignoring someone or simply being annoying. And the meaning of these words can differ by person. You probably have some ideas of your own about what a bullying behavior looks like. Abusive behavior can be placed on a continuum from a minor distraction to a disruption of the workplace. And in fact, abusive behavior is difficult to assess and manage because of diversity of culture and lifestyles. Within the concept of abusive behavior, Intent should be a consideration, but it's not the only consideration. Bullying is associated with a hostile workplace when a person or group is targeted and is, and is threatened, harassed, belittled, verbally abused, or overly criticized. Bullying may create what some consider a hostile environment, a term generally associated with sexual harassment. Sexual harassment means that the person is uncomfortable with the environment in which they are, in which they have to work because of sexual innuendo or other types of comments, regardless of the intention of the individuals who are involved. If it creates a hostile work environment, then that is a potential, has potential to be sexual harassment. Although sexual harassment has legal recourse, recourse bullying more broadly has little legal resource at this time. Uh, one of the areas where discussion continues, what is appropriate and what isn't appro appropriate, particularly given different personality styles, different cultures, and individual freedoms, and individual, the individual's uh, uh, rights to express themselves and the like. Lots of challenges associated with this particular area. Some of the things that we can think of as being associated with bullies or with bullying is intimidating behavior, uh, it's difficult to assess. Here's a list of some of the items that you, some of the things that one might see. Um, the, there's both verbal and nonverbal. It could be even physical. Um, there can be manipulations. There could be threatening expressions. There's all sorts of ways one would encounter bullying in the workplace so one must uh, keep themselves uh, keep themselves open to identifying situations where bullies are being bullying is being observed and take action rather than being a bystander take action to obviate some of that uh, some of the, the some of the um, the risks or the, the the sense of insecurity that people face who are in those kinds of environments let's look at another uh, area where there's some ethical challenges, misuse of company resources. In this particular case, in organizations, you are given resources from the company for the purpose of, of achieving the resources, achieving the objectives of the company. So how does one deal with the situation that those resources can also help individuals um, manage or achieve their own personal objectives that have nothing to do with work? Misuse of resources was identified by the Ethics Resource Center as a leaning issue that is observed as misconduct in organizations. Issues might include spending an excessive amount of time on personal emails, submitting personal expenses on company expense reports, using the company credit card, using the company copier for personal use. The most common way that employees abuse resources is by using company computers for personal use. 
typical examples of using a computer for personal use include shopping on the internet, downloading and playing music, doing doing business for personal purposes, um, even charging, uh, 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 incurring fees at times for that sort of thing, uh, doing personal banking, surfing the internet for entertainment purposes, visiting Facebook. Essentially, it's using computers and uh, time theft at the same time. Some companies have chosen to block certain websites, such as YouTube or Pandora, from employees. However, other companies choose to take a more flexible approach. No matter what approach your business chooses to take, it must have policies in place to prevent company of resource abuse unless uh, to be certain that employees understand their responsibilities and don't misunderstand that those assets are to be used for company purposes. Because misuse of a company resources is such a widespread problem, many companies have implemented official policy delineating what's an acceptable use of company resources and what is not. Now we'll turn to yet another important area. In fact, one that is, as one becomes more senior in management, becomes oftentimes a more difficult challenge to deal with. That's conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is one of the most common ethical issues identified by employees and most even more so as employees become more senior or have more roles with more responsibility. Conflict of interest exists when a person must choose whether to advance his own or her own personal interests or those of a broader group, most often the whole organization. But it has to do with who it is you're representing, yourself or a broader group. Those are the interests, if you will. To avoid conflicts of interest, employees must be able to separate their personal financial interests or personal interests of other types from their business dealings. Insider trading is an example of a conflict of interest. Insider trading is the buying or selling of stocks by insiders in an organization, people that know things that others don't, they possess material that's still not public. Trading on that information in a public company is illegal. Bribery can also be a conflict of interest. While bribery is increasingly an issue in many countries, it is more prevalent in some countries than other others. In the next lecture, we'll talk about the important values that people must have in order to navigate through various kinds of conflicts of interest as well as other ethical issues.